Hi, boys and girls. Uh, it's Miss Manning here. Today we're learning, uh, we're going to be reading chapter eight for The Road to Freedom. Um, today we're learning how the illustrations in a text help the, guide the reader's understanding of a text. So we're looking at how the pictures help us understand, and it has to go along with the words that we're reading. So first we have to identify the visual elements that, and how it, that affects the narrative of the text, so the story of our text. And then we describe how those visual elements, sometimes it can be pictures, sometimes it can be um, uh, tables or diagrams or maps, how those contribute to the meaning, the tone, or the beauty of the text. Um, sometimes in pictures, they're going to use darker colors when something scary or um, awful is happening. Sometimes they're going to use brighter colors in the text to help you know that the tone of the story is lighter. Um, but then we also have to use text evidence to support our conclusions. So when we were younger, we would look at pictures to help us know what's going on in the story. Now we're more focused on how the author or the illustrator has included things into the text that help us understand the meaning of our story, the tone of our story, and the beauty of our story. But we have to back that up with text evidence. We can't just look at the pictures. So our by the way word today is Philadelphia. It's the largest city in the state of Pennsylvania, and it was very important in the abolitionist movement. So when we're looking at our map here, um, the states that we had at the time that were um, slave owning states were right here. And so when they're talking about going north, they're talking about going up north here. Philadelphia was a big part of that, especially because they sometimes they could travel through water uh, on a boat to Philadelphia. Um, but then later in our story, we find that they have to continue moving on up into Canada, which is above here. They also talk about Buffalo in our story, and Buffalo is here in New York. So if they end up in Philadelphia, then they move to Buffalo, and then they would continue on north to Canada. So while we're reading, I want you to figure out why the change in the setting at the beginning um, to the end in chapter eight, why that's so important. So focus on how our setting changes from where we started at, or at chapter eight to where we end up at the end of chapter eight. Back on the plantation, when Papa was with us still, he told Mama about a woman named Harriet Tubman who escaped and came back south again and again, bringing fo folks north to, the, to freedom. Papa said she never lost a passenger. I hoped Mama and I would be safe with her. Miss Harriet had friends everywhere we went, but we still had to be careful. She showed us how to watch for a light in a window or a flag blowing in the wind to know if we were safe. We slept in barns and hid away in attics. Sometimes Miss Harriet would change clothes and look like a man. Sometimes she used a cane and walked hunched over like an old woman. It was no wonder she couldn't be caught by bounty hunters. She was always one step ahead. In one home where we hid, someone said there was a $40,000 reward for capturing her. I couldn't count much, but I knew that was a whole heap of money. We crossed rivers and, cro and walked till my feet were covered in blisters. But tired as we were, Harriet never let us stop. How much longer, I'd ask when I got tired. Harriet answered by walking faster. One night, with the snow, light snow falling all around us, we crossed into the, nor into the north. Philadelphia, Harriet called it. Philadelphia was filled with people and houses all close together. A lot of people were free. Negroes dressed fine, looked like freedom, looked like freedom had a way of making them walk a little bit taller. Mama looked different too, proud that she'd made it to freedom and happy to have me beside her safe from the auction block. Just when we got settled in, in good with a friend of Harriet's, she sat us down. Your journey's not over yet, she told us. Your master is still looking, and he posted a reward for, for you both, she said. Even though you're in the north, the law says your master still has claim on you. So the only way you can really be safe, safe is if you go in, on into Canada. Mama nodded like she already knew. Are you coming with us, I asked? Harriet shook her head no and told us she was heading back south. There were more people who needed her help. Mama and I would be alone again. 
A carriage brought us through town and to the train depot. A real train this time on real tracks. That would take us all the way to New York. Harriet had friends on this train who could help us once we reached Buffalo. And from there, we would be taken to cross the river into Canada. We climbed aboard the last car and Harriet handed us blankets and food. Mama turned to us, turned to say something to Harriet, but before we knew it, she was gone. All right, so for our first vocabulary word, we have the word hunched. Uh, it's on page 26, and I included the pictures in it because we're supposed to be using the pictures to help us. So when we're coming across words, we can also look at the pictures in our stories to be able to help us, or the illustrations, I should say. So right here it says, sometimes she'd use a cane and walk hunched over like an old woman. So I would look at these pictures of her and I would find the one where she has a cane or she looks like an older woman, obviously not this one or this one. Uh, and so it's right here. So hunched over is describing how Harriet walked. So that is what hunched looks like. Your shoulders are forward. It's like your, your back can't straighten up. We, um, typically see older people walking like this because of um, their spines. All right, so our next vocabulary word is capturing. So in one home where we hid, someone said there was a $40,000 reward for capturing her. So it's a reward, they're getting money, and they have to do something, and that's that action here, capturing. And so I have to think about what I know about slave hunters and how they always want to take them back to their slave owners. So it's the action of them taking her back to her owner or her, uh, her masters. And then our last one is also on page 46. It's blisters. We crossed, we crossed rivers and walked until till my feet were covered in blisters. But tired as we were, Harriet never let us stop. So it's something that is on her feet. Her feet are covered with this. And I know that they're covered with this because they're tired and they walked for a very long time. So um, and blisters are just things that develop on your feet. Um, sometimes I get them from wearing new shoes that are uncomfortable. Sometimes you can get them from um, being on your feet too long and things like that. We know that um, Emma now has shoes previously she didn't have shoes, but she's walking until she has blisters. So her feet are already pretty tough from not having to wear shoes and now they're still blistering. So that tells you how far they were walking. So you're gonna, I want you to compare how Emma and Mama traveled in this chapter with earlier, earlier parts of their journey and how can you kind of account for these changes? So because I have access to the book easier than you guys, I'm going to compare, or I'm gonna start listing some things that happened earlier in their journey. So earlier in their journey when they were traveling, they were always alone. It was always just mama and Emma. They weren't getting help from other people, uh, especially early on when they first escaped from their master. They also had to sleep outside. I was particularly thinking about the time that they had to cover themselves in leaves to hide from the slave catchers and to stay warm. Um, they also, Emma didn't have shoes at the beginning of this chapter. So now after she met the woman with a quilt, then she ended up getting shoes. Also, they had, they ate a lot of ash cake. That's what they were able to make for themselves to take on this long journey. Um, so now I want you to kind of think about the things that are happening in this chapter and I want you to write how it compares. So remember when we are comparing, we're finding some similarities between the earlier event and the this chapter. So I want you to try to find things that are similar. They don't necessarily have to be, um, now they're obviously not alone anymore, but just write on this slide some things that were similar. So we're gonna be looking at the pictures um, and the text on page 46 and 47. And we're first, we're gonna start with a description of the picture. And then we're going to be able to back up what we saw in our picture with our text evidence. So let's go ahead and let's start here with this picture of Harriet Tubman dressed as an old woman. So I'm going to go back to my table and under description of picture, I'm going to put Tubman dressed as an old woman. So now that we have that, let's go in the text and try to find some text evidence that supports what we see in the picture. 
So right around here, we slept in barns and hid away in attics. Sometimes Miss Harriet would change clothes and look like a man. Sometimes she'd use a cane and walk hunched over like an old woman. So we know that when she was trying to hide, she was dressing up as an old woman. So Harriet Tubman could look like, well, let's say look older than she really was. And then I'm going to put in there, walked with a cane, not can, cane, and hunched over. Okay, so let's go back to our pictures and let's look at the picture of Harriet Tubman dressed as a man. So on the description of my picture, I'm going to put Tubman dressed as a man. Now I'm going to go into the text and I'm going to look for text evidence that backs that up. So we kind of read part of it when we were looking for the old woman. Sometimes Miss Harriet would change clothes and look like a man. So I have text evidence that that is actually Harriet Tubman dressed up as a man. So she can disguise herself um, as a man so she wouldn't get caught. All right, so now let's go back to the um, text and let's look at all of these posters. I see two of them of Harriet Tubman of the one that I know of from pictures. I see two of them of for her as a man and her as a woman, but what are these posters? What are these pictures that we see? Well, those are reward posters and they're offering money for $40,000 for her reward. So let's go ahead and type that in here with a description of our picture. So reward poster for Tubman's capture her capture, so that should be. All right, so back on the text, we've got to find some text evidence about that. So right here it says, in one home where we hid, someone said there was a $40,000 reward for capturing her. So that's our text evidence that backs it up. And the reason that they have these reward posters for Harriet Tubman is that she was dressed up as a man. She would dress as an older woman. She would go at night. So that picture helps us realize, and the honestly to me, the amount of money that she was worth, especially at that time, $40,000 is a lot of money to me uh, now. So back then that would have been a huge amount of money. So clearly they weren't actually, it was hard to catch her. because she had, not because, but um, it was hard to catch her. And I know that because she had so many different posters, but it was hard to catch her because she changed her appearance so much. So they didn't necessarily have a good illustration of who she was or a picture even, of what she looked like when she was helping free slaves. All right, that's all I have for you today. Um, I will see you again tomorrow with lesson nine. Bye guys.